Hello everybody, Naomi here. I just wanted to go over what I am planning to bring the next time that I travel on an airplane when I want to paint with watercolor. I have not actually tried it before. I've always been a little bit daunted by the idea and I think the reason is because of the water itself. Um, and I've come up with a couple of solutions that I think will work so I'm just gonna see how they go. But for now, I wanted to go over my little watercolor kit that I plan to bring and show you what I have in it and just see if you have any other ideas or if this inspires you a little bit. So I want to make sure that my experience is as fun as possible. I don't want it to be frustrating or else I just won't use the things and then why should I pack them if I'm not gonna use them, right? So the first thing that I want to make sure that I bring with me is good paper. And I am a dedicated Arches girl, so forgive me if this is not your favorite brand. I know that other brands make small blocks like this as well. Um, but for today, I'm just going to go over Arches paper because that's what I love and use. I prefer to choose something in about the 5 by 7 size, if possible, because, you know, you're only working on a small tray table on the airplane. And you might have people on each side of you, so you don't want to be bumping them with your elbows. Uh, so I'm keeping that in consideration. Arches does not make a 5 by 7 block. I wish they did. I know that Fabriano Artistico does, and I'll go over these things in a minute. But they do make a small sort of panoramic view of a block here that's about 4 by 10 inches. And you can either use it, you know, horizontally for sort of a landscape, or you can do some vertical arrangements but it is a little bit limiting because of the format it's very wide or long um, so that's one option i'm also considering this block which is about eight by eight inches 7.9 by 7.9 the handy thing about having a block is that everything is neatly glued around the edge and so you don't have to worry about taping down your paper or pads of paper you know flapping around i'm not a big fan of sketchbooks um, I know a lot of people are, but and Arches just came out with an, a sketchbook of their own. But I just don't like the loose edges on the paper, so I'm considering using a block. And with that in mind, I also made one of my own. So yeah, this is kind of um, DIY, but if you're interested in doing this, it's not hard. What I did is, and this is 5 by 7 so these are little 5 by 7 sheets. I have six of them in here. And I just cut down Arches paper to 5 by 7 size. And then I reused the back of one of the Arches blocks. So here's this one. And I just cut it down to about 6 by 8. And then I carefully used painter's tape to tape down each individual sheet one at a time. So I can't show you each one in here because they're already done but I basically taped one sheet down all the way around, then I put another sheet on top and taped it all the way around, and I kept doing that until it was about six sheets deep, and it's really secure, and it's very sturdy. I can't bend this thing at all, so I think this is a nice little size. It's smaller than this block. It's about as wide, but it's not as uh, tall, so that means that I will have more space on the tray table if I want to. And then I used the black protective paper that was on the inside of the block. When you open it, it's black um, to protect it. So I just cut that down, made a little belly band, and now I can slide that in and keep all of my paper protected. So I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna choose between these two for paper. Then we'll get into what's in this little pouch. But this pouch is made uh, by Redbubble, and I have this design on my Redbubble page, so I will link that below. But also, any, any artist who's on Redbubble who sells these pouches, they're all going to be made the same way, and I find them to be really durable and strong and heavy-duty, which the zipper works really easily, uh, and it's just a really nice thickness of canvas. So this is the medium-sized pouch, and it just barely holds everything that I need. And I'm pretty excited to show you what's in it. The first thing that I'll take out is my little paint palette. And this one is the Small Tin Palette by Medin. And you can get these on Amazon. I know that Schmincke makes their own palettes and things like that. So this one, what I've done is I've put in here 
my 14 essential colors one has popped out okay i'll just stick that back in uh, but i've put in my 14 essential colors that are by daniel smith that i use all the time plus i cut off two cheap paint brushes um, so that they would fit in here this they're both by crayola so these are their crayola white taclon brushes and they're really inexpensive i use them to dig paint out of the wells and put it on here so that i'm not ruining my good bristles on my good brushes um, but they're really inexpensive and I just use them to get paint out. This flat one I am planning to use if I want to completely wet down my entire paper because it spreads out really well and it's going to be just a good flat brush for covering my entire uh, watercolor block if I want to do like a sky or something like that. So these are the colors that I'm bringing by Daniel Smith. I have a cool and a warm yellow lemon yellow and quinacridone gold i have a warm and cool red this one is transparent pyrrole orange and quinacridone rose and then i have several blues i have cobalt blue french ultramarine phthalo blue red shade and phthalo blue green shade i have phthalo turquoise sap green yellow ochre burnt sienna burnt umber and raw umber and with this group of 14 colors, I can mix pretty much everything that I need. You might want to go even more bare minimum and just have the split primaries, warm and cool of red, yellow, and blue. Uh, but I had room, and this is a pretty tiny palette, so why not? I just bring all 14, and they fit in there perfectly. It's just a really nice little palette to bring. It's tiny. And if I put it in a Ziploc baggie like that, then after I'm done using it, if there is a little bit of paint sloshing around, it won't get all over everything. So I've got paper and paints. Then I will go through all of the other things that I have in here. So I'm going to go through this in just a minute. That will save for later. In terms of rags, I have two cotton handkerchiefs. I use these all the time in my studio, and I just use them in place of paper towels. So these, I just, you know, use them to wipe out my palette. I use them to sop up extra water. I use them to um, lift out clouds and clean off things. It, they're just wonderful. They're super absorbent. And then when I'm done, I just throw them in the washing machine and they are ready to use next time. So it's a nice reusable alternative to paper towels. However, because I will be on an airplane and who knows if I'm going to be able to um, really clean up my mess very well. I do have about three paper towels that I have ripped off and put into a baggie just in case that I need to do a big cleanup or something and then throw them away. So that's ready to go there. In here as well, I have some extra scraps of watercolor paper so that if I want to test out a mix or, you know, test out my colors before I put them down, I have extra paper to do that. Those are just ends that I kind of trimmed off. I have a mechanical pencil. This one is by Papermate, and it has a PVC plastic eraser on top. So that is really nice because those are really good at getting the graphite off your paper without damaging it too much. And then the lead inside is HB 0.5. So I have that, and I also have a couple of erasers. I have just put them into this little plastic container. This is the one that the kneadable eraser came in. And so I just ripped off a piece of it and just stuck it in there. That's nice for lifting off graphite without leaving a lot of eraser fuzzies. And this is a, just a piece of a plastic eraser that I cut down to fit inside next to it. So I've got two different erasers and I have my mechanical pencil. So I don't need to bring a sharpener. I guess that's the reason for that. Along with my pencil, I also have replacement leads. So this one is HB and it's 0 0.5 and I'm just bringing a few extra leads to bring along for my pencil. Something else that I'm bringing is extra painter's tape. That way, and I've just wrapped it, I've got half inch and one inch painter's tape. And I've wrapped them around one of those little credit cards. This one happens to be just a fuel rewards card for the gas station. And it's one of those mini ones. So I just wrapped a whole bunch of painter's tape around. And that way I don't have to bring the whole roll with me. 
and it's really compact and easy to carry along. You can do this with washi tape or anything else. And then I also am bringing an extra piece of another one. And the reason that I have this is because you can use it to separate the papers from your watercolor block. If you have that little notch inside, just right here, you can slide the credit card down inside and then just rip the papers off because usually I would use a palette knife or something, but I am not sure that they're gonna let me bring a palette knife on the airplane. So this is a little bit less of a potential weapon, <laughs> I guess, in, in TSA's perspective. Um, so anyway, also the, the nice thing about having a credit card is that you can do really great special effects with your watercolor too. You can scrape out rock texture, uh, you can scrape out bark, you can use the edge to lift off pigment to make grasses and foliage. You can do um, little bits of fur sticking out of an animal. You can do fish scales. And you can also do, if you hold it on its side, you can rub it like this and do um, the texture on birch trees, that um, the, the horizontal bands on birch trees. You can also use it this way to pull down sea foam the white waves, the tops of the waves on the ocean. So there's a lot of things you can do with a credit card for watercolor. And if you Google that, you'll be able to find all kinds of techniques. Plus, it's so tiny, you can just slip it in and bring one. Why not? Okay, now we'll get into brushes. And I, I am not sure what I'm going to really want to use. So I am bringing a couple of things. I am bringing the water brushes, of course. These are fillable you can fill the barrels with water and um, these ones are just from Michaels so I'm going to see how they go I've not tried this brand before I also have on order from Amazon some by Pentel and I've heard good things about them so I'm going to just see which ones turn out better but this came with um, a small medium and large point so here is the small and then here is the medium and here is the large. So you can kind of see the difference between those, the bristles. And they do have a working pen clip, so that's handy. Some of them don't actually work, but these do. And then it also protects the bristles because the cap goes over the bristles and then of course they don't get smashed. And the way that you fill them is that you open them up and then there is an opening here to fill them up with. Some water brushes have like a black uh, cap that fits over here and protects it from leaking. These do not. These ones from Michaels, that black thing is actually just in there and it doesn't come out. But that's fine. And this opening is so big. Um, some of them, what you can do is you can dip it into your water container, squeeze it, and then let it go and it will suck up water into there. But I don't think that's going to work on these because the opening is so big. So what I'm bringing along is one of these plastic pipettes. And then I can actually just suck up water with the pipette and put it in here and fill it up. So that is what I'm planning to do. These take up no room at all and they're pretty much weightless as well. So there's that. From Michaels, um, this set also comes with a little flat brush, which is this one. And it's flat, but because I have already got a flat brush in my paint palette, I'm not going to bring that one. I think I'm just going to stick with these three and I'll see if I enjoy them. However, I really do prefer using my actual paint brushes to paint with and so I'm planning to bring these also. Um, for skies and big washy areas, I'm using this silver black velvet number 10 and I'm using the tube protectors to keep the bristles protected in my bag. So I have those, they come on them when you buy them in the store or online, and then I just keep those so that when I travel, it's basically like having a travel brush without having to have a travel brush, if you know what I mean. You can just use your regular brushes. And then I use Princeton Aqua Elite round brushes for the rest of my paintings. So I have a six, a two, and a three zero. So I've got kind of my medium large, my small, and then my tiny brush for doing details. So these are the four that I would put in here. And they all fit perfectly in. And then last but not least, I do like to have a little bit of white gouache with me when I am painting just for those tiny little touch-ups at the end, 
highlights in an eye, you know, little sparkles on the water, stars, things like that. Um, and I prefer to use it fresh out of the tube because then I can paint with it neat. I feel that when I reconstitute dried gouache, it's never quite as good, and that's just my own opinion. So I like to use fresh tube paint, and this is the one fresh tube that I would bring. So I actually need to put this in with my liquids in that quart bag. I did check it on TSA. They don't allow you to bring every kind of paint. Um, I think especially oil paints, they may have certain restrictions on those, flammable paints. But because watercolor is not flammable, they do allow you to bring it, but you have to put it into your 311 quart bag. So this will go in there. So I'm not actually going to keep it in this bag for now. So all of these things are going to go right back in. And now we come to the main reason why I have never painted on an airplane before, and that is the issue of water. My issue is always that I end up with needing to dump out my rinse water several times throughout a painting. And it's not a matter of having the water. I can always ask a flight attendant for a cup of water and they will happily bring you one and it's no big deal. So getting water on the airplane is not a problem. It's just that I don't want to have to bother the people next to me with getting up and dumping out my water several times during a painting. And so I've kind of come up with either using those water brushes that are in here, um, because then all you need to do to clean them is squeeze water out through the bristles and wipe it on your towel until the bristles are clean. And you don't really need a cup of water anymore except just to refill the, the barrel. So that's an option, and I did think of that. If I want to use my real brushes, however, I have come up with this idea that I think will work really well. And that is, I am going to use a combination of three things. So, I'm going to have my water bottle that I fill up after security. This one is empty. I'm going to also have a second water bottle that I fill. So, after we go through security with empty bottles, then I'm going to fill up one of them with water on the other side. And that one I can drink from, but I can also use it to, this one is going to stay empty for now. Okay, I'm going to fill up the second one and I'm going to use it to drink from, but I'm also going to use it to fill up this collapsible water cup. Um, or you could just ask the flight attendants for a cup when you get there. But this one is handy because it's collapsible. And I'm going to fill that up with water and use it to rinse my brushes. And then when it's dirty, I am going to get this empty bottle out and I'm going to pour the dirty water into this bottle and it will take several of those little cups to fill this thing so I should be able to get by with emptying my rinse water several times before I need to go empty this thing and to get the water from here into here I have a collapsible funnel so this thing is really nice you just pop it open okay and then you can put it into your water bottle and dump all the dirty paint water in there and then refill it from your full water bottle and put the lid on to keep all the dirty water contained and once this is full which will take quite a bit of time I don't need to empty it every single time I can empty it when it's actually full then I can get up out of my seat and go empty it um, but I think it will just reduce the amount of times that I am impinging on my neighbors good kindness <laughs> by asking them to let me out and if I'm in an aisle seat you know that's great but you can't always choose your seat uh, depending on your airline the other nice thing is that this thing just nests right in here and I could actually cut that off it's made to hang it up somewhere but I don't plan to do that so I could just cut it off and then it fits really nicely back in the bag so I think by having my two water bottles with me and this kit, I should be good to go. It all fits in there. I just need my watercolor block. And then I need a couple of water bottles. And that should be it. This would be good for plein air painting too. And of course, if you want any, any tube paint along, you just need to put it in your quart bag. One other item that I thought about, but I don't think I'm going to bring it just because it is one more thing to bring. But 
it is a personal fan and it's for drying your painting so that you don't have to wait as long in between you know washes um, this one is a really nice one it has three speeds listen to this and it also has a bending handle so that you can stand it up and it can blow right on you so if you're a person who kind of needs fresh air and you feel a little claustrophobic on a plane this might be a handy thing to bring um, and it folds up really compact like that and so I like it and actually the th the third setting the highest speed works decently well not as fast as a hairdryer but it works decently well to dry off a painting and also it isn't that loud and it doesn't take a cord so it's just battery operated and then you can just pop that in your bag so I'm not going to bring it this time but I think it's an option I do sometimes bring it when I paint at coffee shops and things like that just because then I can dry it off before I need to close up my painting and leave so I'm not leaving with a wet painting so anyway that's an idea too and if I can link it I will do that below so I hope you have found this helpful if there are any other supplies that you would recommend for painting on an airplane I would be happy to hear what they are and otherwise have a great day and happy painting